In the second part of the effect size tutorial videos I'll be making, I'm going to be discussing the R family, which is the variance explained, such as for correlations. So, starting off with between group designs, and just a general overview of the R family. The R family of effect size measures is used to quantify the ratio of the variance traceable to an effect to the total variance. R is often interpreted as the proportion of variance explained. The correlation regression, regression coefficients R and capital R are rarely measures of effect size on their own due to the fact that R covers the whole range of relationship strength from zero, which stands for no relationship whatsoever, to one or negative one a perfect positive or negative relationship. There are three primary effect sizes other than correlation and regression coefficients that are used in measure measuring associations, and these are eta squared, partial eta squared, and omega squared. As partial eta squared is often given in statistical outputs, such as SPSS, I won't be covering that one, but I will be focusing on the within and between group designs for eta squared and omega squared. So starting off with eta squared. Eta squared is commonly used to describe the ratio of variance explained by the predictor variable when being compared to the dependent variable while controlling for other predictors. Eta squares shares the weakness with R squared in that each additional variable will automatically increase the value of eta squared. Eta squared measures the variance explained of the sample, not the population meaning that it, is, it will always overestimate the effect size. However, this overestimation bias grows smaller as the sample grows larger. So the eta squared will be a statistic and not a population parameter. And you can see the formula here. It is simply the sum of squares of the effect divided by the total sum of squares. So going through a worked example, Suppose we want to investigate the magnitude of effect of the difference between injury level, uh, which is, has three levels, low back injury, other injury, and not injured, and the left-right percentage difference of the <coughs> L5 multi muscle cross-sectional area in cricket FOSS bowlers. The left-right percentage is calculated as follows. The largest divided by the smallest value times 100 minus 100. After, cal after having calculated the primary statistic, which, is, which in this case would be a univariate analysis or a one-way ANOVA, we get the following output, which was generated using SPSS. So we can see our different types of injuries. No injury, which has 30 participants. Injury, but no low back pain injury, has 33 participants. And low back pain injury has 25 participants. And overall, the model is significant and has two degrees of freedom. That's important to know because we'll be using that later. So let's calculate the eta squared for that worked example. So using the formula previously shown and shown above here, we can calculate an estimate of the magnitude of effect. The sum of squares for effect in a scenario would be the variable of injury type. You can see that here. And so in order to calculate eta squared, we would simply divide the sum of squares injury type, which is 403, by the total sum of squares, which is 9201.76, which gives us an eta squared effect size value of 0 0.0438 which can be rounded off to 0 0.04. However, as mentioned, eta squared is an uncorrected effect size estimate that explains sample variance and not population variance. Thus, it is recommended that one use omega squared, as it does correct for some, although not all, of the bias. While eta squared statistics can, be described, can describe the effect size observed in the research, it is often important as well as valuable to move beyond a particular study to the population and therefore becoming a parameter from where the sample was derived and therefore of the effect size that could be projected from a, replica a replication of the study. 
One way that we can achieve this is by calculating omega squared, which as mentioned is less biased, which is a less biased estimator of the variance explained in the population. Since omega squared is less biased, although not, un not completely unbiased, it is preferable to eta squared. The formula for calculating eta squared for between group designs is shown in the next slide. However, it must be noted that this form of the formula is limited to between subject analysis with equal sample sizes in all cells. So here's the formula. It's a sum of squares treatment minus the degrees of freedom of that treatment times the mean square error divided by the sum of squares total plus the mean square error. So that using the same data as was used in the eta square example, this data, we can calculate omega squared using the formula shown. Sum, the sum of squares for treatment would be the variable of injury level, which is again 403.42 which is subtracted from the treatment degrees of freedom, which is 2, multiplied by the mean square error, which in this case would be 31.58. We can see here, mean square error, 31.58. And this eventually gives us a numerator of 340.26. Next, we calculate the standardizer or the denominator which is the sum of squares total, 9201.76, which is added to the mean square error, which is again 31.58, giving us a total number of 9233.34. Lastly, we can divide the numerator of 340.26 by the standardizer of 9233.34, which gives us an omega squared value of 0.03368 which is then rounded off to 0.04. As you can see, the omega squared effect size is sli slightly smaller than the eta squared effect size of 0.0438 due to omega squared being less biased. As the sample size increases and becomes more representative of the population, the differences between these two measures of effect size will decrease. So let's move on to within group designs for the R variance family. So oops, whilst it is possible to calculate eta squared and omega squared for within group designs, such as a repeated measures NOVA calculation, which will be the example I'm using, the formula to estimate this effect size does become more complex. For example, if you're using a mixed factorial design and you want to investigate the magnitude of effect of one particular factor, for instance, factor A, Sulkind in 2010 recommended using the formula below. This particular formula Factor A can be changed to whatever specific factor that you want to calculate the effect size of. And the formula for calculating omega squared for within group designs is slightly different from between group design formula, but omega squared is still a less biased population estimate when compared to eta squared, specifically for small sample sizes such as those less than 20. And it's simply the degrees of freedom from the effects times the sum of squares treatment minus MS error divided by the total sum of squares plus um, the mean square for the subjects. So our worked example for this within group design would be testing to see if there is any difference from the left versus right arm left and bowlers using the same group to perform the task twice using a repeated measure SANOVA. So our main factor is simply the arm side with one degree of freedom because there are only two groups and only two repeated measures of those groups. So to calculate the eta squared for the above statistical output, we would firstly calculate the total sum of squares as it's not given in this output, but it's quite simply done by adding the sum of squares of the factor, the arm side, with the sum of squares of the error this gives us a total sum of square value of 53,942.5 and this would be our standardizer. As we only have one factor in this example, we would then divide the sum of squares for factor A, arm side, by the total sum of squares, giving us an eta squared value of 0 0.091. As was mentioned before, 
eta squared is a positively biased estimate of effect size and one should use omega squared as the alternative effect size measure where possible. To calculate omega squared for within group designs, we would first need to calculate the numerator, which would be the degree of freedom, which is 1, times the sum of squares for treatment, which is 4904.327, minus the mean square error, which is 1961.527, giving us a total value of 2942.8. Next, you would need to calculate our standardizer, our denominator, which is the total sum of squares plus the mean square, the mean squares for the subjects, which is 53,942.5 plus 4,904.327, giving us a total standardized value of 58,846.38. Lastly, we divide the numerator by the standardizer, giving us an omega squared value of 0.05. Cohen in 1988 provided a rule of thumb for interpreting both R and R squared, suggesting that an R of 0.1 represents a small effect size, 0.3 represents a medium effect size, and 0.5 represents a large effect size. In contrast, for eta squared and omega squared, a small effect size would be 0.01, a medium effect size would be 0.06, and a large effect size would be 0.14. However, as with Cohen's benchmarks for interpreting D, which would be in tutorial 1, or part 1 of this tutorial series, this should only be done as a last resort, and it is preferable to compare the calculated effect size to other estimates of effect size in the relevant literature. And that's it for this tutorial, or this part of the tutorial, and the next one will be focusing on categorical measures of effect size. Thanks for watching.